Hey friends, Matt here. And in this video, I wanna show you a cool way that you can create your very own dynamic EQ using stock plugins and devices inside of Ableton Live. I recently did a video showcasing a bunch of different ways you can apply DSing in your projects. And uh, I mentioned in that video that you can create your own dynamic EQ. And that's what I wanted to showcase here in this video. Real quick, if you don't know what a dynamic EQ is, it's basically a typical standard EQ equalizer that just reacts to a signal in a dynamic way. For example, when a certain frequency range exceeds a certain level, we can have the EQ react dynamically to that change in level of that particular frequency range, which works particularly well for things like DSing as an example. Now, I won't say that this is a replacement for a dedicated dynamic EQ plugin, something like FabFilter Pro Q3, for example, is probably one of the best dynamic EQs uh, that is out on the market. But this is a really cool thing that you can use if you don't have access to maybe pay for the fund for something like that. And it's also a great way to learn some things about how racks work inside of Ableton Live if you actually go ahead and build this for yourself. So without any further ado, let's jump right in and show you how to build the rack for yourself. So to start, here's an example of this dynamic EQ in action. Here I have a drum break. And down here, I have this MTM dynamic EQ bell version. So this is a bell EQ dynamic EQ, which means that it's just a bell curve that reacts to the signal in a dynamic way. So for example, we could set the frequency here to something like around 200, and we can either compress or expand these frequencies. So basically turn down the EQ when it exceeds a certain level or turn up the EQ when it exceeds a certain level and intensity control and attack and release controls. So for instance, here on this drum break, we have quite a loud fundamental of the snare. And we can see that here on this EQ. And if I now tune this frequency to where that is at around 200 Hertz, we can decrease this by compressing it, change the Q value a little bit to make it more narrow. And we can now hear that that fundamental is getting decreased. Or we could expand this and make it louder by simply changing the expand control. So now that we can see how it works, let's go ahead and build one ourselves. So I'm gonna delete this dynamic EQ rack from here and we're gonna start with an EQ8 on this track. Now, first, what we need to do is basically create the frequency range that we're going to have the EQ listen to in order to apply that dynamic movement. So here with this EQ8, we're gonna go ahead and create this bell dynamic EQ. I'm gonna turn off all of these different bands except for this one band right here, this third band. Then I'm going to group this to a rack and then open up the macro controls. And on this rack, I'm going to add macro one here to the frequency control of this particular EQ node. And then same here with macro two to the Q control. I'm gonna turn off the adaptive Q setting and then I'm gonna reduce the gain of this band by 15, which is the maximum amount that we can decrease it by. And then I'm gonna change this scale setting here to either 150 or 200. Let's go to 200% for the moment. And we can now see that we have a massive kind of decrease in this frequency range, right? Let's actually set this back to 150, just so it's a little bit less intense. And now what we wanna do is basically have it so we're listening to just this signal that is being taken out of this particular sound. To do this, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up a new, or open up the chain list here and create a new chain. And on this chain, I'm gonna add a utility device and just invert the polarity of both the left and the right channels. And now what this is gonna do is basically give us the difference between this EQ8 channel here and the dry signal. So we're gonna be listening to effectively just what this EQ8 is taking away from the signal. If I turn off this utility chain, turn it back on. And we can hear this difference again if we start playing around with this frequency and resonance controls. And what we've done here is effectively create like a bandpass filter. So now what we're gonna do is use this as our listen signal to again, apply the movement to an EQ. So to do this, let's go ahead and now add an envelope follower. And this is what we're going to use to map to the next EQ that we're gonna add into our device. But first of all, let's group all of these together by selecting all of them, 
right clicking and clicking on group. Just to clean things up a little bit here, let's hide the rest of these macro controls on this first audio effect rack, just so we can only see frequency and resonance. And let's open up the macros on this kind of larger, more parent rack here. And let's go ahead and map the gain, rise and fall controls of this envelope follower also to macros in this rack. So let's start by mapping these macros here to macro one and to macro two. And now let's go ahead and again, map the gain here to macro three, macro four and macro five. So now we have this frequency control, the resonance control, and then we have the gain, the rise or attack and the fall or the release of this envelope follower here. So now we can see that this envelope follower is going to react dynamically to the signal that we've kind of carved out using this bandpass filter here. Awesome, so let's go ahead and once again, clean this up just a little bit so we can only see the six macro controls here. I'm also going to fold up this audio effect rack here in the center. And now what I'm actually gonna do here is open up the chain list of this first audio effect rack and create another new chain. And then I'm gonna mute this first chain here. This first chain with all the audio effects on it is our listen chain. So I'm gonna rename this to listen. And then this second chain here, I'm gonna rename this to through. So now we can just hear the dry signal going through this through chain, but this listen signal is still working. And so now we have the signal that we actually want to apply the dynamic EQ movement to. Now let's go ahead and add an EQ8 here just after this through chain. And now what I'm going to do is again, turn off all of these different bands here, except for this third band. And I'm actually going to again, group this EQ8 to its own audio effect rack and map the frequency control here and the Q control of this band to the first two macros. And then I'm also going to go ahead and map the gain control here to a third macro and the scale control to a fourth macro. And again, just to clean things up a little bit, let's remove those last four macros so we can only see the four macros here. Now from here, there's kind of two ways we can go about applying this dynamic EQ. We can either have the envelope follower control the gain of this particular EQ node or we can have it control the scale of this EQ. And depending on what we choose, we can create a kind of different dynamic EQ. If we choose the gain here, we're only going to be able to apply this dynamic EQ in a single direction. However, if we choose this scale control here, we're actually gonna be able to apply that kind of compression and expansion like I showed in the example at the beginning of the video. So let's go ahead and map this envelope follower from here to the scale by clicking on that map and then clicking on scale. And for the sake of this, I'm also going to change this to remote here. Next, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is change the range of this scale macro by opening up the mapping controls here, going to scale and going from zero to let's say 200 or 150. Let's keep it at 200 for the moment as it gives us just a little bit more range to work with. Once again, let's turn off the adaptive cue here on this EQ8, just so things are kept consistent. And now we can see that as we start to play a signal, this scale control is going to be adjusted based on the listen chain that we've created here in this first audio effect rack. And if I decrease the gain of this EQ node, we can see it applies it in a negative direction. Or if I increase it, it'll apply it in a positive direction. And now all that's left to do is go ahead and group these all to a single rack and then macro up everything. So let's go ahead and group both of these two audio effect racks together by selecting them both, pressing Command or Control and G. Next, what I'm gonna do is close up this chain list here and I'm going to then open up the macros of this first major audio effect rack right here. And now we get to map all of our different parameters. We're going to map the frequency control of both the first audio effect rack and the second audio effect rack to macro one. So now the frequency of that first EQ in the listen 
and this main EQ here is tied to the exact same frequency. And we're also gonna do the same with this resonance control. So resonance here to macro two and resonance here also to macro two. And so now we can rename this to freak or frequency and we can rename this second one to Q or resonance. Next, I'm gonna map this gain of this second audio effect rack here to the third macro. And this is going to be our compression and expansion control. So if this is at zero, we're going to be applying absolutely no dynamic movement. If this is below zero, we're gonna be applying compression. Or if it's above zero, we're gonna be applying that kind of expansion movement. Because of this, we can rename this to comp slash expand. And next, what we're gonna use is this gain control here on this first audio effect rack, which is the gain of that envelope follow-up to control the intensity of this dynamic EQ movement. So I'm gonna right click, map this to macro four, and I'm gonna call this intensity. Next, the rise and the fall are the attack and release. So we can map them respectively, macro five and macro six, rename this to attack and rename this to release. And then we can close up these audio effect racks, remove these last two macros, and now we have our dynamic EQ. Now, you might wanna leave this last audio effect rack here open up so that you can actually see the EQ, but we don't need to have these macros showing so we can just hide them with the macro control here. So now, we've built our simple bell dynamic EQ. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about music production in Ableton Live from me directly in a one-on-one -on -one capacity, I actually offer individual lessons and monthly mentorship through my Buy Me A Coffee page. You'll find links in the description for those. Now, it's also totally possible to turn this either into a low shelf or a high shelf just by changing a few of the different parameters in this EQ here and in the EQ in the listen section or the listen kind of uh, chain in that first audio effect rack. To showcase this, let's just turn off this first audio effect rack here and duplicate it with Command or Control and D and let's collapse this first audio effect rack so it's a little bit out of the way. And now let's turn on this second audio effect rack. Now, in order to create a low shelf, what we wanna do is have that listen signal be a low pass filter instead. So we're just listening to the low frequencies. This is really easy. So I can go ahead and open up this first audio effect rack. Once again, open up the chains, open up this listen here open up this second audio effect rack inside of here. And I can actually turn off this utility control, go to the EQ. And here, instead of having this be a bell, I can change this to a low pass filter. And I can just unmap this Q control here from the resonance and set this to 0.71, which is the kind of default resonance control. And now this listen signal is listening to everything that is below that set frequency of this low pass filter. We can collapse up this audio effect rack here, and then we can just change this particular EQ node here from a bell to a low shelf. And now we have a dynamic low shelf. We can see this is really good for kind of boosting up like a kick drum in a drum loop or something like that. And the exact same process applies to create a high shelf dynamic EQ, except instead of changing it to a low pass filter, you would change it to a high pass filter and then change this particular EQ node here from a low shelf to a high shelf. So I've actually gone ahead and created devices for this. I've got a dynamic EQ bell, a dynamic EQ high shelf and a dynamic EQ low shelf, which we can open up and see what the EQs inside them are doing. And if you wanna grab these, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find these over on my Buy Me A Coffee page. Of course, you're welcome to just go ahead and build the racks yourself following the techniques I showed in this video. And so there you have it. This is how you can create your very own dynamic EQ inside of Ableton Live. You unfortunately can't do this in Ableton Live Lite or Ableton Live Intro, but you can do this in Standard and Sweet. Hopefully you followed along there and created your very own dynamic EQ. Otherwise, of course, you can go and download the ones I've put together by heading on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you all in the next video.